The G Technology line of drives are in a class all on their own. And while you can use external drives for storing any kind of digital file, if you bought a G Technology branded drive back in the day, chances are you're in the video production field. With a lot of creative professionals using Apple computers and those Apple machines having FireWire built into every unit at the time, it was a no-brainer to go with the external drives that had the I.O. designed for video transfer in mind. The association of G-Technology and Apple were so close, G-Technology products proudly wore an aluminum finish so closely resembling Apple, if it didn't have a G logo, you'd think for certain it came from Apple's own assembly line. Shift focus to today and we see G-Technology currently residing with SanDisk Professional, which ultimately falls under the Western Digital umbrella. And while still retaining the aluminum casing, most of their newer products turn away from the Apple-esque influence of yesteryear, while still targeting the creative professional, Mac-based demographic. Okay, so we have our G-Safe RAID set up here, and what we're going to do is go ahead and take these Western Digital 2 terabyte drives. Now, these were once in a terablock uh, setup, but they've been taken out of commission since, and they're going to be recycled so I figured I'd go ahead and snag a couple of these for use for this project and what we're going to do is this enclosure is empty it doesn't have any drives in it and we're going to take two of these and place them in here and set up a RAID 1 RAID, RAID array. Now uh, RAID 1 is basically a mirrored setup which basically means you have data going to both both drives, there's two enclosures here, and the data is going to both drives. So in case one drive fails, you can you won't lose all your data. You still have your data on the other drive, and you can get another drive and replace the broken drive, and the data can just copy off the good drive to the new drive. So what we're going to do is take these drives out of this enclosure here, out of this TerraBlock enclosure. That's what it was used for, a TerraBlock server, and we're going to use it and put it in here in this enclosure now um, as far as the condition of these drives I'm not sure where they stand as far as their health is concerned they're both two terabytes and uh, they're Western Digital uh, it looks like the model number is WD 2003FYYS um, and it's got on the label here that they're uh, enterprise storage so I'm not sure what that means in terms of how well they're going to perform in here or if even if they will perform in here um, I imagine this should just be a simple case of replacing the drives and the enclosures here and setting it up via the operating system so what we're going to go ahead and do is open this up and replace those drives so we'll start off now you're going to want a, a needle here or something some kind of fine-tuned needle here uh, I just took a stapler and, and straightened it out here and you're going to want to go into the lock hole here and just press it in there and bam. It un releases the latch, you pull this out, set that right there and I'll go ahead and unscrew the old TerraBlock uh, container around this enclosure around this drive here real quick. Now, I got this G-Safe enclosure uh, from work. Uh, they were, looks like they were recycling them. Well, there goes that screw. They were, uh, it was a case of, uh, they were, I guess, just getting rid of the drives. They had, I hope, got the footage copied over because this, this enclosure, according to the labels on it, were used for a show we work on. Uh, an older season of a show we worked on, or we st we're still actually working on the show, and um, that was a producer backup of the high-res footage. That would be the footage we go out in the field and shoot and stuff, and um, where I work at, uh, we mostly do documentary-type work, and uh, this would have been this drive or this enclosure here would have been used to hold the. Uh, interviews and the b-roll the recreate footage stuff like that the producers would want to have a uh, hold of want to have backup copy of so that way if they need to go back and look at it they don't have to pull the media from um, from media prep or or that such 
or online. It's just kind of a convenient way to have it. Plus, it's a backup in case online needs to find the footage and we can't find the footage. We can go to a backup, producer backup, and pull the footage we need and stuff. So that's what it most likely would have been used for. So let's see here. How difficult is this going to be? Oh, okay, so that just flops in like that. So we got the screws undone. Okay, oh, okay, there we go. And there we go. So we'll put that off to the side here. So we've got our drive here. I'll go ahead and wipe it off a little bit here. Just an old rag or something you can use to wipe the dust off. Drives and stuff like that can easily get dust on them. And doing this video is also allowing me to test out uh, my Atomos Ninja that I've got attached to the camera recording this at the moment. Uh, looks like it's recording fine from what I can tell. Hopefully everything is uh, in focus and you can see all the detail on this drive here. But we're going to go ahead and take this. And actually, now that I think about it, I should probably check and see if there's anything on this drive to begin with. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so we're going to take the two turbine drive and go ahead and stick it in the uh, drive toaster here and see what we got. Okay, the disk you inserted was not readable by this computer initialize. Okay, so yeah, what do we got here? So yeah, I figure this is probably an issue. Um, it's not really giving me much information on this drive here. Uh, yeah, let's see here. First aid, yeah. capacity two zero Yeah, we already know that. I mean, we weren't really trying to pull anything off this uh, drive here, but it does look like it at least recognizes it, so that's good. So we'll go ahead and turn this off here. Pull it out there. And we'll just go ahead and stick the drive in here. So let's go ahead. We should we should be able to format it once it's placed in there. So let's see what we got. Oops, looks like I might need to go in this way. Line up the holes there, the screw holes, and let's go ahead, and I'll need to find that other screw, I guess, if we're going to get these screwed in here, so go ahead. Let's see what we have. Got to get lined up here, that's, that's the issue. Let's get lined up. Seriously? Okay, why is this not working? Okay, yeah, it'll screw in. Why is it not screwing in with this, though? I'm at the point where I'm trying to figure out what screw goes where? Um, I thought I had these screws pulled out the way they were supposed to be. Um, but trying to get them back on, trying to get the new drives back in the uh, G-Safe case enclosure for the drives is proving to be more difficult than I thought it would be. Um, so I'm just going to try and use the screws I have here and see if I can get something just uh, pulled together here. So we'll try that. Okay. Okay. Well, that fits. 
fit in there? Let's see. Huh, that one may not work. Okay, we got a three out of four on this one, so that one should probably be good. Go ahead and stick that one in here. There we go. And close that. You got to stick the little... Uh, tip in there, the metal tip in there, or something in there that you can get into the, the lock. Key in there. So, yeah, just press that open and bam, just pull it right in. So just... Oh, no, no. Okay, there we go. That's in there now. Let's go ahead and get this drive out here. There we go. Pull that off. We'll go ahead and clean it off real quick here. Yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is. Like, I guess I lost a screw or something and misplaced it, or I don't know. I'll probably go. I'll probably figure it out once I go back and review the footage here. But for now, we just need at least a couple of screws in there in order to keep it safe and secure i think ideally for spinning drives you want all the screws you can get in there but i think we may just end up having to work with what we have here so let's see these here going this way probably So for this screw right here, I actually had to use a uh, T9, looks like a T9 screw that I had um, from another device project, something like that, that I had lying around. Um, so I used that to fill in this missing one here, and then I could probably do the same using one of these maybe for... this other one that was missing so let me go ahead and do that and I'm going back and fixing the first drive that I placed in the enclosement unit here so yeah that's it's a good idea to go ahead and keep screws around from other things that you throw out just in case you know you need eh. I don't know we'll see I'll see if this works. I think the thing is I, I uh, opened this up before and maybe when I did that I lost some screws so we're going to see if we can try and remedy that. Seriously, cannot a single screw stay on the thing? Okay, I don't have to do. I don't know what else to do to put all these in here, so. Okay, so let's go ahead and stick these. There we go. Oh, 
Okay, they're in there. Cool. Good to go. So what I ended up doing was taking various different screws and use them to uh, screw in the drive to the enclosure here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is ideal. I doubt it is, but uh, as long as they're in there and it's not vibrating around too much, I think we should be good. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is try and get this uh, set up and configured with my uh, Mac Pro here. After getting the drives inserted into the enclosure, I powered on the unit and it appears to be functioning. Time to see about getting the drives formatted. I referenced the G-Safe manual, which thankfully was still on the G-Technology support page. However, the screenshots used to make the formatting instructions involved an older Mac operating system that used a slightly different disk utility layout. I decided to just format the drive how I felt it would serve me best, so I just named it G-Safe and formatted it for XFAT with a GUI partition map scheme. After clicking the erase button, Disk Utility did its thing and I had a G-Safe drive ready to go. However, if you want to add some icing to this G-Safe cake, then you can override the generic external drive icon with that sweet G-Safe icon. A quick Google search led me to a support page with all the G-Technology icons ready for download. Note, you may have to play around with browser settings to force the page to cooperate due to probably outdated security protocols. I had to use Safari for it to download on my machine. I'll leave the link to the icon page down below, assuming YouTube will let me. Now it's a G-Safe. Let's run a quick disk beat test and see what we have. Note, all the testing from here on out will be conducted using FireWire 800 because I don't have an eSATA setup. I set the test to run a 5GB stress test, and here are the results of that test. I wanted to give this unit a somewhat real world scenario, so I copied the footage from the Dell restoration video that you might want to check out after this video by the way and got started cutting in clips to see if I could edit off of it, and I felt I got usable results. In Premiere Pro CS6, you may want to turn down the playback resolution, but I would consider this usable if I had to cut something that wasn't too long. I also played around with this raw image in Photoshop CS6, and I don't recall any issues either. Overall, this unit is still usable with FileWire in 2022, but wonder if better results couldn't be achieved with eSATA. Like I said earlier, I don't plan on using this drive for anything too important that I couldn't live without. I can't recommend anyone follow in my footsteps though, if you're in need of a RAID 1 storage device. Despite what they may go for online, I feel that money should be put to newer, faster technologies. While the G-Safe is now considered an obsolete piece of storage history, I can't help but look at it and think just how modern it looks, even today. Do you have any memories of using G-Technology drives back in the day, or do you continue to use them to this day? Leave a comment below and tell us all about it. Thank you for watching.